As many channels turn to much of their media coverage to the growing concerns across the U.S. and possibly the world, many of our on-scene reporters are starting to arrive at locations that are most impacted by these events to discuss the concerns that are unfolding there and to get an eye on the scene of what is being reported by civil defense and other government agencies. What we're seeing is something quite different than what we've been told, but it also shows that much of the conspiracy around these events is also greatly exaggerated. The rumors of afflicted individuals and mass groups walking the streets attacking people is nowhere to be seen, yet still travel in these areas can be precarious at best as the threat of infected is still very real and the fear that some of these individuals have become stuck in areas like fences, hotels, apartment buildings, and parking structures. It makes certain areas even more perilous to travel. Police are warning though that all these areas are considered dangerous within these zones where citizens are told to simply shelter in place and stay off the roads. They don't have much choice as many stores and gas stations have simply closed. There's shelves and tanks empty from truckers that refuse to enter these zones. Even important emergency supplies like food and medical have been stopped at checkpoints or simply turned away, being told they will be allowed to enter once the area has been deemed cleared. We have Zach Fallon live in Philadelphia to address these concerns. Thanks for the intro. Things aren't good here, but the residents are doing their best to make it through. Food has stopped being delivered to local stores and some are going without water due to water main breaks. For the most part, citizens are holding up in their residence, waiting for some form of all clear. Thankfully, power is still flowing to the community that sit by televisions and radios awaiting news. Sirens can be heard in all directions, a constant reminder of the plight these people face, yet there's no word of when their struggle will end, but it appears their situation will become worse before it becomes better. Back to you in the studio. While many people did leave these initial areas fleeing the zones before they were erected and told they need to shelter in place, the majority have decided to weather the storm, so to speak, within their homes. We tried to get comments, but many simply turned us away, fearing that our reporters were potentially infected. And therein lies a problem that all the information regarding the spread of this illness has been clear. A good majority of people haven't received it, causing a paranoid fear of interaction to avoid illness. That a simple cough or report of not feeling well has resulted in ostracization or those reporting to shelters to see if they're sick. CDC has clarified reporting from military assets within one of these zones, relaying that only possibly way to become affected is through a drug containing the contamination or via a bite wound, but to avoid injury that could pierce the skin in any way. There is no sign that a coherent or speaking person could pass the illness. Eyewitness reports a different occurrence. They report that people are dying from the affliction with no signs or symptoms quickly waking up, attacking anyone around them like feral animals. What could only seem as far-fetched or completely unbelievable occurrence was confirmed by one reporter via a homeless individual who stated that people who pass away from the illness would later wake up or sit up, some standing like statues staring into the void as he described it. If they were left alone, they would simply stand, but once approached, they would attack. CDC stated that due to much of these reports being from homeless or drug-afflicted individuals, that their veracity could not be confirmed, that that these symptoms could have simply been ignored or mistaken, that the illness is clear and concise, and those who are completely healthy shouldn't worry or report to a shelter. Still, these reassurances are not standing well with many areas that are now seen as centers of illness. Only in the last few hours, we've been able to reach locations far faster than the CDC through a network of reporters that are continuing to convey information about the illness that are not yet confirmed as quarantine and have no additional assistance. We head over to Andrew Cole reporting from one of these areas now. In the southern parts of the U.S., the situation is slowly increasing. 
We're here in Asheville, North Carolina that has been the hardest hit by the impending spread. What was originally seen as a passing problem in most of the U.S., for these residents is the eye of the storm. An attack that came from a local mortuary spread quickly as residents were attacked and quickly became ill. A self-imposed quarantine was erected in the local high school where anyone injured could come, but many officials refused to discuss what will happen to these residents. But many involved in the setup, who have become well-versed in the effort, have stated that euthanizing will be the only option. Even going so far as to set up burn pits reminiscent of the mounds for Black Death that spread through Europe in the 14th century. It's an ominous and surreal feeling to stand here knowing that many of those afflicted with the illness will not survive the night. Back to you in the studio. As these new areas of infection begin to emerge as confirmed locations, it becomes more and more important that the media network continue to convey and report their findings to anyone potentially entering these areas. But we're finding more and more these safe zones are drying up. The government has remained largely silent on the actions other than to assure residents that police, fire, and medical care are hard at work and well ahead of the situation and to allow them to have space to do their work. In a passing act, the president, who is currently on his election campaign trail, stopped to make a statement to reporters. It's important to understand we have our top scientist on the job making sure the safety of America is our priority. Americans need to understand and cooperate with these efforts for quick resolution. More and more states are beginning to declare a state of emergency and calling in National Guard forces to assist in their efforts. Complaints from activist groups have been very critical of the activity, stating that not much has been done to counter these new infections and that the actions are more as a use of damage control, even declaring that the National Guard activity was limited to defending the capital and centers of government a place where reporters are not given access, supposedly hiding the overall impact. Officials in many states have quickly denied such a claim, saying that any funds secured to assist in combating this illness not only employed top scientists and health professionals, but allowed National Guard to assist in defending shelters, power facilities, communication, and other sensitive areas, even going as far as hiring private security armies to assist in these efforts. The truth is, standing in these areas, our reporters declared that it was difficult to see activity from one centralized area. After reporting to multiple shelters, albeit not nearly enough, have been erected, that personnel were doing their best with the resources that they had available. That many former military individuals had come forward and volunteered to assist in helping the sick, who for the most part were testing negative for the illness. This hasn't stopped what is being called right-wing militia organizations from begin training and active patrols of areas that they feel have been most affected by the illness. In some cases, these forces are even employed by sheriff organizations or police staff to assist them in their activities. This has led to a government bill banning the training of these militia groups. The Democrat House Majority Leader feels confident at this time that even with pushback from more extreme elements that the situation calls for an immediate disarming of those who take a stance of vigilance against people who are sick, that these individuals are not judge and jury and are not proactively trained or qualified to medically deduce a sick person and could injure innocent people, that it is up to the medical establishment to make those determinations. Unfortunately, at this time, many medical establishments have closed their doors and canceled life-saving testing due to the ongoing issues in their respective cities. Doctors who refuse to treat individuals because not only the dangers involved, but that insurance companies refuse to pay for procedures on individuals. The full details are not known at this time. Why insurance companies have refused to pay and any calls to the representatives went unanswered. Hospitals like Pittsburgh have found outbreaks within their location that require National Guard to clear these buildings and set up perimeters to keep people from entering possibly contaminated spaces. And therein lies the issues of what we face. From what we've seen so far, there's a stark contrast between what is happening in one area to another. In heavily affected areas, it can be considered a life or death struggle, while in western parts of the U.S., life goes on as usual. 
How long before that could change, or even if it will, is anyone's guess. But what is assured is that those who do have a moment of quiet are beginning to prepare for the worst. As we take our focus to the world, it's difficult, if not impossible, to truly understand what is happening as we still wait for confirmed reports in Russia, China, and Japan to come to light. The only assured location is South Korea, where an attack on a KTX railway is being reported in the southern part of the country. But reports are limited at best, and we're awaiting further news. UK, France, Germany, Spain, and Italy sources have reported no activity in their countries at this time, as major cities remain on high alert and medical professionals move into actions to support U.S. efforts. Stick with us as we unify our efforts to provide you the best ongoing reporting on these events as they unfold within your area. National reporting may soon change over to primary reporting on these events, so make sure you stay tuned.